The truss rod is designed to counteract the string tension on a neck. String tension will tend to want to pull a guitar neck into a forward bow. And while you want a certain degree of relief in the neck because of how the strings vibrate, you want to be able to adjust that relief and get it so that you have a moderate degree of forward bow in the neck. The truss rod is put, is installed right down the center of the neck. And in the case of the more modern truss rods, the double acting rod, it can actually push the neck back or forward depending on what the neck needs of, of your guitar. The truss rod is not primarily used to adjust the action. It is really only adjusting the relief in the neck, not the neck angle, not the string height down here. It works interactively with action at the saddle to get the overall setup of the instrument that you, that you want. Certain players who play very heavily down in the lower positions might want to have a bit more relief in the neck than somebody who's typically playing up all the way up and down the neck. So there is no absolutely correct neck relief. It's really highly dependent on your technique, uh, the string gauges that you're using, and, um, and how hard you play. There are a number of different types of truss rods. The oldest style is the single acting compression rod developed by Gibson in the early 20th century and it works they're mounted in the neck into a hole in the heel area adjustability is up at the peg head and a nut bears down on a washer compressing the neck and attempting to take the the bow out of the rod itself and that will tend to pull the relief out of the neck a variation on that is the single acting double rod where rather than applying the compression to the wood part of the neck it applies it to a metal rod which is placed in the upper position in the neck. These rods can be put so that the adjustment is either at the peghead end or at the body end through the sound hole. A recent variation on that is the double acting double rod that works in a push-pull mode and can pull back to reduce the relief or pull forward to increase the relief. Um, a variation on these is the the Martin style rod where the rod is encased in a, in a U-channel of metal. Uh, it can be very tricky to tell what type of truss rod you have. Typically older instruments have the single acting compression rod. Uh, one way you can know about that is if you go counterclockwise with the nut and it comes off in your hand then you've got a single acting compression rod. The double acting rods generally use an Allen wrench eighth inch or nine sixty fourths. They can also be tough because in the single acting double rod once again the nut itself can come off. With the double acting rod the nut is actually welded to the to the threaded rod and the entire rod turns inside the neck. Um, generally there'll be a bit of heat shrink over there or tape or something like that so that when the truss rod is installed in the neck it doesn't get jammed with, with glue. I'm going to adjust the relief in the neck on this Martin using a 3 16 Allen wrench and to get a little more torque on it I'm going to use a wrench here that will fit over just so I can get some some leverage on it. One thing you should know is not to over tighten a truss rod. Uh, there is generally a bit of delayed action when you adjust a truss rod and so 
it's very easy to go too far. Be much better off doing a little bit today, a little bit tomorrow, than to try to crank it and crank it and get everything done instantly. The other problem is that it is all too easy to snap off a truss rod, uh, strip out the, the nut, uh, break the weld. So if you go too far, you're into a major job to remove a fingerboard, remove a truss rod, and, and put it in. On this one, I wanted to get a little less relief. So I'm going to do a very subtle, about an eighth of a turn, clockwise, crank on the truss rod. Once again, I'm going to check it using the technique of pressing down at the first fret and down around here, 13th or 14th fret. And there we have minimized the relief in this pretty nicely. Now I'm not trying to adjust the action with the truss rod. I, I really believe that action should be adjusted first correctly at the nut and then at the saddle. I'm just working with the relief in the neck to allow a bit of room for the arc of the string vibration, particularly in the open positions and the first couple of positions on the neck. With this Martin, I adjusted the truss rod with an Allen wrench through the sound hole. Now I'm going to show you an example of a guitar that has the truss rod adjustment up here at the peg head end and uses a socket wrench, quarter inch socket wrench for adjustment. So again, I'll check the action and the, the relief here actually and do a very slight adjustment here. A little more relief into this neck. that looks like I'd like to see it. So now I've showed you adjusting standard truss rod at either end of the, of the neck. One thing you should note is that these are subtle adjustments. If you're working on a guitar and you're not getting the results that you should have, you might want to take it to a professional luthier. It is easy to overdo this.